just make sure this is working on the right. in the name of the Lord who has made the heavens and the earth. When thou sendest thy spirit, new things are created, O Lord God. Brothers and sisters, I welcome you to the celebration of my 28th year of ordination and ministry as a pastor of the Presbyterian Church and as a bishop of Idikai Mary Ministry. In today's service, we are going to hear what God has for his people. God asked Solomon to ask him for anything. And Solomon did made his request known. In the reading from Romans this morning, we will hear about how the Holy Spirit helped us in our prayers. So in this spirit and in this celebration of the resurrection of Jesus, our God, let us enter this worship in the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Thou who sendest thy spirit, and you create new things. Create new things for us, your people, this day. We ask for the most important things. Things that will abide forever. We ask you to accept the offering of ourselves in Christ Jesus, our Lord, and all this prayer we make this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, our God, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I want to use this opportunity to thank the Presbyterian Church of Nigeria for all that they have done for me. I want to thank especially those who have gone to be with the Lord, the Kakalezi Agmokon, Elder Agmokon, those who are still alive, Reverend Emmanuel Kalo Uka of Ututu, Nigeria. I want to thank the one who has gone to be with the Lord, Elder Mrs. Oguri Kaluche. I want to thank especially my father who is in the presence of God, Aguime Ribe. I want to thank him very much. And I also want to thank my teachers, Professor Emelem Bauka, Reverend Dr. Professor Enyi Benoda, who is going to be with the Lord. Reverend Professor Dr. Aga uh, Okata Gaude, one of the toughest academicians I've ever seen in my lifetime. I want to use this opportunity to thank them all. And also to thank my mother, Mrs. Mercy, Aguime Ribe. I want to use this opportunity to thank each and every one of you who have supported me along the way, who have made my journey easy. Without you, it would have been nothing. I use this opportunity to thank the Holy Spirit 
for his revelation and leadership. I want to thank the Lord Jesus for not allowing me to be a soldier or a lawyer, who knows? And he called me into the Holy Ministry and the Holy Spirit separated me for special operations. That's what I'm doing. Let us hear the word. Let us begin with the psalm first. Psalm 119. Please, the reader, tell us the psalm you are reading and the verses so that people can follow you. Please listen to the psalm. Psalm 119, verses 129 through 136. Your statutes are wonderful. Therefore, I obey them. The unfolding of your words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commands. Turn to me and have mercy on me. As you always do to those who love your name. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. Redeem me from the oppression of men. That I may obey your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your decrees. Streams of tears flow from my eyes, for your law is not obeyed. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen and amen. Let us pray for the sick. Father Almighty, heal everyone who are calling upon thy name in some remote places or our neighbors. Please heal those who are sick because sickness ain't good at all. It hurts us. Number two, we ask you, O God, for those who are expecting some special miracles to happen to them, that you will stretch forth your mighty hand and I'll stretch uh, your mighty arm and our stretched hand to minister to the needs of those who are expecting something special from you. For, Lord, remember, that they did not go to the other side to look for help, they came to you. Therefore hear the prayers of your people. Lord, I ask thee to destroy every legality and assignment that has been made against your people. We also ask you this day, O oh God, that you defeat and remove every wicked leaders from among our nations. Let us pray for mothers and fathers who are preparing to send their kids back to school. Father, we pray that this morning that your grace and power will support every parent struggling to work, eke out a living, to send their kids to college, or those whose kids are to start middle school or high school. Eternal Father, we pray for those who are looking for a job that you give them something special that has to do with the assignments in life. We thank you for being the omnipresent and the omnipotent God, the omniscient, the God who sees, who knows, whose arm is not limited. As long as your people are willing, oh God, be willing to help. Let us pray for those who are traveling by air, by land, and by sea, that the Almighty God will go with them 
let us also pray for those who want God to use them to do mighty things. Lord, one thing that we ask of thee is that you will fill your people with your presence. As long as your presence goes with us, everything will be all right. Eternal Father, we thank you for 28 years of ministering before thy presence and to thy people. Lord, I ask for a mighty harvest to be poured out upon my life and upon the earth because of this kind of special ministry that has been going on. And everything that we've done has been to your gracious and glorious name. I offer you the tithe, the donation, the contribution, and the offering of my very spirit, mind, and body, and all of our materials that you have poured out through us, and things that are to come that are even mightier than what we've seen, that you will use it to bring many to righteousness and to the advancement of our earthly life and the preparation for even a far more higher quality of life here on earth and in the heavenlies. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our God and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us hear the reading from the epistle to the Romans. In the same way, the Spirit also joins to help in our weakness, because we do not know what to pray for as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with unspoken groaning. And he who searches the heart knows the Spirit's mindset, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Yeah. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. There we go. For those he foreknew, he also predestined. That's what he does. To be conformed to the image of his son. Yes. So that he would be the firstborn among many brothers. Oh, yes. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. Yeah. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? There you go. He did not even spare his only son, but offered him up for us all. How will he not also with himself grant us everything? Okay. Who can bring an accusation against God's mm -hmm. elect? God is the one who justifies. In the blood of Jesus. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died. Thank you, Lord. But even more has been raised. He also is at the right hand of God and intercedes for us. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Nobody. Can affliction or anguish or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written, because of you, we are being put to death all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. Now, in all these things, we are more than victorious through him who loved us. For I am persuaded I am. that not even death or life, <laughs> angels or rulers, things present or things to come, hostile powers, height or death, or any other created thing will have the power to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah. The Lord bless to us the reading from that wonderful, powerful, glorious epistle written by St. Paul. And unto his name be the praise and glory both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And amen. <sighs> Hallelujah. Is there somebody that you received an answer to prayer? Can you tell us in a few seconds? 
anybody who had a dream that has to do with your destiny and you want me to interpret them very quickly anybody with a quick testimony about what God has done for you alright if there is none let us hear let us listen to the gospel for the day hear ye the word the gospel of the Lord hallelujah The reader. Oh no, I'm sorry. We are. Uh, we skipped the gospel for today. We skipped the gospel. We only choose the psalm, the epistles, and the Old Testament. That's what happened. Sorry. So let us hear the word of the Lord from the good news of the Old Testament. <laughs> It's still the gospel, still the good news. Let us hear the word of God from the good news of the Old Testament from First Kings. Let's hear the word of the living God. First Kings chapter three from five to twelve. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. By night. And God said. Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth, and in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him just great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O oh Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that can not be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech please the Lord. So Solomon that Solomon had asked this thing, said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, neither hast asked the life of thy enemies, but have asked for thy soul understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy word. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee. Neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. This is the end of the word of God. The Lord Almighty bless to us the good news of the Old Testament. 
and the Lord bless all of you who have read this morning. And unto his name be the power and glory and dominion and riches and wealth, both now and forever. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Forsake the kingdom, and every other thing will be added to you. Has always been has always been the principle of Jesus. If you put God first, everything will come together. In spite of the fact that Solomon did not ask for his enemies to be killed, don't let that fool you. In spite of the fact he didn't ask for riches, don't let that fool you. Because at the end of the day, he killed everybody who stood in his way. Everyone who disrespected his father David, he wiped them out of the face of the earth, including his own brothers. So don't let that fool you. <laughs> Those who cursed David when he fled from Absalom, he made sure that he annihilated them. He removed them. Solomon didn't joke. But that's a different thing. That's politics. That's a way of consolidating his throne so that those people will not be alive to challenge him. Normal human characters. I like to bring all this to you so that you can see the way things really are. So that you are not carried away by the, what you are reading. You have to be balanced. Let's begin. The greatest thing that God wants you to ask him, there are two things, only two things, or three or four. So let me name them as the Holy Spirit told me. Number one, ask God for the spirit of faithfulness in your assignment. When I will begin to talk about assignment, you will know more about this. God doesn't reward us because we do so much. He rewards us because we are faithful in the little or in the big he asks us to do. Ask him for the spirit and the gift of devotion, faithfulness, and responsibility. Ask him for the spirit and the gift of boldness so that you are not easily discouraged and worn out. Ask him, excuse me, ask him for a wise spirit, the spirit of understanding, so that you are able to penetrate everything you see and everything you hear and be able to not just make, not just know the difference between good and evil, but ability to avoid the evil and only move towards the good. Ask God for the spirit of judgment that comes out of love so that you are not carried away by power. Ask God for the spirit of simplicity so that in spite of the greatness of God in you, in spite of his blessings in you, you will not be arrogant. Ask God to make you not to be distracted, to be focused. So that when you become a great person, you are not carried away by administrative work and too much and of people pressing you. You will still be available for God and for human beings to access. Ask God for the spirit of humility so that money and power doesn't deceive you and enter into your heart and you become arrogant. Ask God for a dream so that as you know your destiny, you stay on it and build with God 
or God build with you or through you. Most of all, ask God for power. The power to read scriptures with revelation. The power to love him and to be married to him. Rene's word. My own word bonded with him. So that you will know when to leave human beings and be with God. And when to walk away from the presence of God with power to use it to solve human problems. Ask God for his presence, which is the most important thing of all. If the presence of God doesn't go with you, everything you are doing will crumble. It will not stand the test of time. Ask God for the spirit of self-control. In fact, ask him for all the fruits of the Holy Ghost. Solomon didn't ask that. That's why Solomon became an adulterer, immoral, and become a worshiper of other gods. The same Solomon that you are hearing this story. Because if not, if you do not ask him to give you all the fruit of the Holy Ghost, the power of the occult and, and sorcery in your territory will destroy you. Ask God to surround you and to connect you with people who will give you godly advice and leadership so that you are accountable to somebody. Hallelujah. These are the things that you should ask. But that's what the good news of the Old Testament God is asking us not Solomon now and I have enumerated the things that you should ask God God is asking you what, what do you want me to do for you and that is exactly what I am putting out to you ask God for the gift of godly leadership so that people do not People of politics do not lead you away from doing things God's way. These are the things that you should ask God. Ask God for the spirit of learning so that you don't stop learning. You'll always be a student till the day God calls you home. These are the things that God is waiting for you to ask him. And he will give it to you. Hallelujah. If you ask for these things, you will have more than Solomon had. God will give you the earth. To inherit. Let's go back to the beatitude and you will see what God will give to those who ask for this kind of thing that I am talking about this morning. Ask God for the Holy Ghost and ask Him for Jesus because we read about two things about Him. The Holy Ghost intercede for us while he's here on earth with us. And Jesus intercede for us while he is there in heaven. We have two, two people of the Godhead interceding for us. This is incredible. This should move you. This should stay you up. Ask God for the power to be productive in everything that you put your hand to do. Ask him for the blessing. Not just for yourself, but so that his kingdom be built. 
and your kingdom be built as well. For yours is his and his is yours. Ask God for godly influence so that even though you will leave this earth, if Jesus tarries, but your energy and your influence will never leave the earth. These are the things that you should ask. Ask God for the lifestyle of heaven and his own very life that he's willing to share with you. The life of Jesus, the life of the Holy Ghost, you need it. These are the things God is asking you. What do you want? If you, if you ask for the things that I've enumerated this morning, you will live beyond the sky. And you will be better than the stars. <laughs> better than the stars. What I've just told you, Lord God, is what I'm asking for. Ask God for the power to build cities, to create product and provide services that will never come to an end except Jesus comes back. Ask him for you to be focused and to believe his word so that his word will work for you. Intention matters. Whatever you believe in will happen. These are the things that you should ask. Ask God for family beyond the family you were born into. They say blood is thicker than water, but that's not true. The same Bible talks about outsiders who stick to you closer than your family. <sighs> These are the things that you should start to ask for. And the Holy Ghost and Jesus will not fail to give it to you. So that you will be good at your assignment. See, it was God who came to Solomon in a dream. But Solomon did something that made God to come. He offered the most sacrifices, the most animal sacrifices that has ever been recorded in the Bible. In honor of God and in celebration of him being made a king. That's why last night we gave God a very serious offering put out things there on YouTube for people to watch. Everything that I put out there is for him to use. I didn't put them out, he did. I ask that today your life will be different because you are asking for things that are beyond you. Ask God for the greatest gift, the gift of discernment of spirit and minds so that nobody will deceive you. Ask him for intelligence. Intelligence that is bigger than the intelligence of demons and fallen angels. Ask him to awaken your spirit so that you can see and hear from heaven. And not just follow anybody who come to tell you their own story of heaven. Hallelujah. Ha! Ume kele atso kenda bolam to kele kisha ti balinda. E kolombo shi te kale takule bo shanti kele bantwale. Ask God for the best things of this earth. So that nobody will look down on your God because of your misery and poverty. <laughs> 